What's up guys, it's your Motivational Gamer, and welcome to a video about raiding in Summoner's War. So, I've been getting a lot of questions about, you know, when you should do raid, when you shouldn't do raid, um, when's it important, what raid stage should you do, what's the earliest you can start, you know, all kinds of stuff. So in this video, I wanted to kind of cover some key points and really help you guys kind of put together your fundamental raid team. I wanted to provide some basic stat requirements and things that you guys can do um, to kind of really kind of start locking in the runes and stuff that, you know, you'll need. Um, when you go through the game, the first thing I have to say is I don't recommend really focusing on raid at all unless you're able to do at least R4 or R5. The reason being is because, well, could you do R3 and still get grindstones? Yes. But if your runes are only, if they're only the quality uh, rating, uh, well, sorry, hold on, let me think about how to say this. <laughs> if your runes are only good enough to do R3, then they're not worth wasting grindstones on. Does that make sense? Um, so once you get into R4, R5, your runes are of a specific quality, um, that where you'll have at least one or two or three or 10 runes that are worth grinding, um, that could turn into great runes that you can hold on to for a long period of time. So, uh, with that being said, make sure, um, that you guys are only focusing on doing raid if you're able to do R4, R5. So when do you know? Well, we'll talk more about stat requirements here in just a second, but let's let's talk about how rating is actually shaped. So when you guys look at when you guys are looking at the raid screen, just like just like I am on my phone, and you have eight slots here. You have four in the front, four in the back, right? But you can only use a total of six, right? So you can do uh, a bunch of different combinations. You can do four in the front, right? Two in the back. Um, you could do a two front with four in the back. Hold on, let me drag these guys down here. Um, or you could do uh, three in the front and three in the back. Now, the question that a lot of people ask me is, well, what's the difference? Well, the difference is, is obviously you want your tankier units in the front because the people in the front are gonna take the brunt of the damage. The more units you have in the front, the, the, the less damage each individual unit takes. So if you're running a four front, they're gonna divide that damage four ways. If you're running a three front, they're gonna divide it three ways. If you're gonna run a two front, then you're gonna run it two, they're gonna divide that damage two ways. Now, the more people obviously you have in the front, the better because it adds to your survivability and it lowers your stat requirement. So let's say for instance here, I was gonna run um, Ravidi and where's my other guy here? Where you at though? Where are you, where are you at though? Sorry, I'm blind. I don't know where Darian is at. There he is. So let's say I was going to run a two front to start. So if I ran a two front to start, let's say typical stat requirements is going to be like 25,000 HP um, and 2K defense, right? If I was going to run a two front. Now, if you're going to run three front, let's say you can probably successfully get away with, you know, running maybe 22 and a half HP, right? Uh, 20, 22 and a half. <laughs> yeah, 22 HP. That's all you need. Uh, and then a little bit less defense, right? So let's just make up a magical number and let's just say 10% less, uh, de you know, depending on the number that you have in front. So again, if you run a two front, because what I currently run is I run about 25k HP and I run about 2k defense um, or more for my two front. If I'm running a three front, then I can get away with less. If I'm running a four front, then I can get away with even less. Um, and that's kind of like your basics. So just remember that your front line is going to take all the damage. So your tanky units up front, your weak squishy units in the back. Now, in terms of defense requirements for your back line, I mean, they're super lenient. I mean, you can usually get away with like giants requirements, like 700 defense, 800 defense-ish, and your units usually will be fine. Uh, the big thing though, that you want to make sure that you do is to get enough HP on all of your units, regardless of the situation. So if you're running, like, so for instance, if you're running, um, uh, let's see, like, who do I use in my back, back line? Like I run Miang in my back, right? So Miang here, like for me personally, she's pulling close to 17K HP, um, but I want her closer to 20,000. So 17,000 to 20K HP is what I recommend typically for your back line. And the reason because is even though like the requirements are not that high, obviously on your back line because your front line is taking all the damage, you still want your back line to have enough HP in order to be effective. Now that HP threshold usually is gonna be between 16 and 20,000 HP. 
um, for your back line, but that will depend on which raid level you're doing, right? So if you're an R3, obviously you probably won't need that much. If you're doing R4, R5, then that's kind of where you're going to want to focus for your starter teams. Now, um, now that we've talked about kind of like the basics of how to set your team up, what types of units are you going to use? Well, being successful in raid is all about negative effects, right? So the negative effects that you're, you're typically typically going to look for are going to be attack speed reduction recovery block attack break uh those three are probably the most important of course defense break and then everything else after that is pretty optional so like if you have branding uh which increases the damage and stuff that you deal then that's great you guys can add that um but attack speed reduction of course attack break um defense break and then recovery block are definitely going to be the four most important things that you can get and more so because if let's say for instance if you guys are running chasun okay and chasun buffs attack so if your units have buffs when the raid boss attacks you and strips your buffs away um if it removes those beneficial effects it basically heals himself right so the recovery block prevents him from healing and which is why that is so important uh usually why you'll see colleen my girl where's she at uh, which is why you'll see Colleen on a lot of raid teams. If you're asking why my my Colleen is not level 40 yet, <laughs> it's just because I don't know. I just I don't know. I six start her and I literally have been leveling her, letting her level in Necro because <laughs> that's just what it is. I know TMG stop being lazy, but that's what it is. So um so outside of that, so let let's talk about that again. So again, front line. If you guys are running a two front and you guys can work down from here, you guys will need you know 25k HP plus. 2000 defense plus and you guys work down the more units you run on the front or you know if you're only going to run a two front then you just work from there on the back line you're shooting for at least 20k hp now the negative effects we cover that you're going to need in your party are attack speed attack break defense break and recovery block and those are the four things that you guys are going to need to make sure that you guys are successful um now Outside of that, there's a simple kind of formula that you guys can run. And I'm not going to mention really any particular units. Just don't use Bella as a healer because Bella's AI is absolute terrible. Typically speaking, for a starter team, you'll have those negative effects. You'll want tanky in the front. You'll have, all, like I said, your negative effects in place. You're going to want two cleansers. So whoever that is for you. So for me personally, um, I use Miang and I also use uh, Lisa. Okay. Uh, if your runes are awesome, you can probably solo cleanse with Lisa if she's fast enough. If your runes are not amazing, then you're probably going to run multiple cleansers. So for me personally, I run two cleansers. These two lovely ladies are in my back line and they stay there. Those are my two units that remove uh, negative effects. If you want to run other units, like uh, who, who's another good one? Uh, Annabelle's also really good for raid cleanse. Um, and then you also have Jamie, the dark, this guy, the dark, this guy, the dark bounty hunter, who's also really good. But basically any unit other than Veramos <laughs> that removes negative effects is great. When you start out, you typically want to look at two cleansers. You want one super fast and one kind of medium speed. So they kind of catch on either side. Now, the trick here is when you guys are shopping for runes for your initial raid team, resistance is going to matter. I know like a lot of like the traditional school of thought when they teach you guys about runes, you don't really uh, keep runes with resistance or accuracy, right? Um, because you're like, oh, I don't need that crap, right? But in raid, uh, what I recommend on your cleansers, the units that are going to remove negative effects, that they have at least 50% resistance resistance so that'll reduce the chance that they have to be stunned which of course in turn will keep your team alive and you'll you'll hear this argument quite a bit uh or you probably you might have already heard it but arguably cleansing keeping negative effects off of your team is almost more important than keeping your team healed which is weird to hear me say that um but Cleansing is really, 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 really important in raid, especially before you guys get into speed raid. So when you guys are putting your safe team together, keeping negative effects off of your team is very, very, very important. And having the minimum accuracy, um, again, so by the time you guys have gotten out of Giants and Dragons, you guys have graduated to 55% accuracy. So make sure the units that you have on your team, again, for your safe team, um, have, or excuse me, that that need to land the negative effects have at least 50% accuracy, okay? So basically two cleansers. So whoever they are, whatever they are, whatever you choose, two cleansers on your team, 
Again, top choices are units like Lisa, the unit Jamie, the bounty hunter I just showed you. Mi Yang is also uh, another great one. Annabelle's really good. Uh, but two units that cleanse. Konamiya is a nice low budget cleanser if you guys need one. But you can put Konamiya, the Water Garuda, in your team and be good to go. He's money, money in the bank. Uh, probably one of the top choices for free to play players uh, to use on the on your team composition and like anything else you could just kind of fill in from there. Uh, you're also um, gonna run two healers, okay? So what I mean by two healers is you're gonna have one main healer. Uh, the top choice typically is Chasun, but I mean I use Miang and Colleen for mine, but you can use Chasun. Um, here, let's take these ladies out here. You can use Chasun, and you could just run some other secondary healer. So if the secondary healer for you is Konamiya, or the secondary healer for you is Colleen, it's whatever it is. Now the trick is, is when you guys are putting these teams together, is to make sure, um, make sure that these teams <clears throat> can do more than one thing at a time. So let's get into like a R1 run here just to kind of show you guys can watch some but the trick is to kind of get stuff together where your units can do multiple stuff so like here is like a super duper safe team here where i got like extra heals to keep my team alive if i just want to like sit in there all day if i want to not do a super safe team um then i can take other units out and put attackers and so that brings me to my next point here so when you guys are putting your attackers on your team your attackers typically, unless they're like defense type or HP type, are always going to go in your back line uh, because you want to keep them alive. If you guys are running like tanky units, um, then you guys can definitely, you know, run like copper or like zinc or whatever you guys are using in your front line. I'm working on like building like the light living armor uh, for raid here. Let me get Lisa in the back. Oop, there it is. Okay, so, um, but when you guys are, again, putting these teams together, make sure that when you look at units, and this is why Colleen, for instance, is one of those, like, top choices, because she does recovery block, attack break, and she also heals, right? So, like, if you're running over with the Chisun, who also busts attack, just like Colleen, it just keeps your team buff, you got the recovery block, you got the heals, etc., etc. Now, when you guys are selecting your attackers for your team... Um, this is this is really really important because you're still going to want to have the HP that you're going to to uh, still put on your back line so like the 16 to 20k depending on what you guys are building um, it helps if your attackers also have a little bit of resistance and uh, quite a bit of HP and other situations like dragons giants you know when you're focused on crit damage some people do opt to just go for the full attack build right like attack 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 or attack attack HP especially like for the initial teams to keep your team safe um, when your teams are safe what matters is that they have the survivability and still the power to be consistent over the course of the battle now choices for the attackers again you just want to go back through and say hey do I have the negative effects that I need? Do I have, you know, recovery block, attack power break, defense break, branding, uh, you know, all of those things that can make your team effective um, still, you know, within the kit. Uh, again, some top choices that a lot of people like to use uh, are like Stella, the water assassin. But for your attackers, I mean, you can pretty much use anybody. It's just really double checking and making sure um, that the units that you do select for your raid team bring the most to the table. Um, so if every single unit on your team is helping each other out, it will make your team more efficient. And so now that we've covered like the basics of kind of like putting together like a fundamental core team for yourself, um, how do you play well with others? Well, the way that you play well with others is really looking at the leadership skills. If you guys notice, like we ran into an issue um, where like the guy had like a water uh, oop, phones dying. He had like a like a water defense lead and the other dude has some other random lead. But the thing is to kind of have try to have a rotation of, of leaderships. Right. So if you have like one unit, that's an HP lead, one unit, that's a resistance lead, one unit, that's a defense lead. It's nice because then you can kind of rotate and build your team around those units um it's real nice to have that especially if you guys are going to be doing pug groups like solo queue raids 
Um, but if you guys are not doing solo queue raids, if you have a set group, then you can stay with that consistent leader. But the best leads are usually HP, defense, or resistance. Those are the top three. When you start getting into uh, faster raids, like speed raids, then you can start looking at crit rate leads, um, you know, attack power leads that stack. Like if you want to do like a wind attack lead and stack that with a attack power lead, you know, for stuff like that. But that's more advanced concepts that will, uh, you know, kind of come down the road uh, as you guys advance and get better runes, etc., etc. So those are the big things and that's ultimately how you want to play well with others and you play off the team. Uh, but typically speaking, you want to make sure on every single team that you're with, your team and the, and your allies, that everybody has the negative effects. Attack, break, defense, break, recovery, block, etc. And then once you guys have those together collectively as a whole, um, then you can do everything that you need to do to get the job done. So, I mean, all in all, I mean, that's pretty much the basics of raid. I mean, we covered the stat requirements, the negative effects that you need, kind of selecting units, the two healers, the two cleansers, especially for a safe team. So like one main cleanse, one off cleanse, one main heal, one off heal, and then obviously tanky front and then uh, damage in the back. If you need to build safe attackers, then just don't be afraid to take the crit damage off and just run like an attack, 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 or an attack, attack HP to keep your team alive initially. Um, and then as you get better um, and your runes get better, then you can kind of do that. But like I said, the longer you spend, um, focus, grind, okay. <laughs> the longer you spend, um, you know, farming before you get to raid, and this is why I recommend not even raiding really into R4, R5, the longer you spend in Giants, Dragons, whatever, getting the runes that you need, the easier it will be for you to really kind of select where your stuff is going to go and really fine tune your runes so you're not having to make too many drastic changes. So if you guys kind of need to, um, well, not if you guys, but what I would do is focus on what your stat requirements are. So what I mentioned in the beginning of the video, right, the, the 20, 25k HP or whatever, the 2000 defense, focus on getting, you know, establishing who your front line is going to be, who are the best units, you know, that bring all the negative effects to the table, your healers, your cleansers, and then start looking at runes that you select. Because the rune selection from, again, farming is quite a bit different because you're going to be getting runes from dragons. So now when you see runes with the resistance and speed and HP and accuracy, you're like, okay, boom frontline ra ra uh, raid rune right whereas like if you get an attack room with like attack power crit rate crit damage resistance and hp you're like oh boom backline attacker that's money in the bank right so that's all that is so hopefully this video was able to help you guys i just wanted to take some time and really kind of break down raiding a little bit or just kind of give you guys a general kind of like theory crafting for how raid works and if you guys got any questions comments concerns any teams that you guys are running uh definitely let me know in the box below and i'd be happy to assist and with that being said guys thank you guys so much for tuning in as always it's your motivational gamer and we will see you guys next time peace